Peace. Peace. Peace, how you doing brother. Today? How are you? I'm good. I'm, I'm good. all right. Grand Rising. Okay, Grand Rising. I haven't seen you in a few ticks. Glad to see you. Unfortunately, in, on this particular uh, side of the fence, you know what I mean? Right, but, um, right, right. You know, as always, we're going to get that work done. Uh, for those who are not familiar, this is a uh, sister uh, whose uh, government name is Ebony Holmes, but we know her in the community as Black Sis. She is a, uh, a, a, a poet, a serious poet. And, um, you know, it, it's funny because around Black August, uh, I know that I always will always see her because of the fact that she's supporting the work that we do, the efforts, the energy. She She's usually one of our hosts when we're talking about doing anything regarding creative resistance, poets for political prisoners, so on and so forth. Um, yes, we've been acquainted for at least 17 years now. Yes, 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 yes. definitely. Yeah, and, and she's also a yogi. Um, yes, a Basu. Yogi. Basu, excuse me, yes. get, my, get, get it right. Africanize what we supposed to do around. Yes, here. when it's yeah. Africanized, it's Basu. No doubt, no doubt. So we're gonna we're gonna get you back on to talk about that stuff. But for now, we have some uh serious things going on in Arendelle State Prison. I wanna yeah. um before we get into the to the meat of it, you know, there's there's been some issues with Arendelle. So can you speak on uh on what's been going on? And then we wanna, you know, I wanna talk to you about you know your loved one who's there, but I want to start off with what what's the climate at Arendelle right now? Okay, so Arendelle State Prison is uh, a prison down, a woman's prison down in Alto, Georgia. Um, they've been having a lot of issues with sanitation, uh, food, medical attention for their people. They've had uh, quite a few prisoners uh, commit suicide or just die mysteriously. Um, last week, the senators tried to go in and, you know, inspect the prison and they were not allowed in. So that was in the Atlanta Journal Constitution. But there are other articles that you can look up on Arendelle State Prison that just talks about the horrible conditions there. So um, they've switched power as of August 1st, and now they have a new uh, warden who I've contacted with no response. And his name is Alan Dillis. And um, I just haven't been able to, you know, contact anyone to get any type of response from them. And okay. apparently there's others trying to get in there and see what's going on and they're just not being allowed. So I guess this is what happened with, you know, privatized prisons. Okay, indeed. So so definitely a privatized prison. You, you, you mentioned issues with food. When you say uh, there's been problems with food, is it a food shortage? Like what, what's going on? Just mold, just like molded food, rotten food that they're trying to give the inmates um uh not enough food so they've just been it's just been just it's just been horrible and i've heard situations about the water there as well can you talk yeah, about yeah there's been parasites in the water and they've had to you know cut the water off so their inmates are not able to take showers they don't have fresh water to drink and then they gave them like a 16 ounce bottle of water for a 24 hour period which is ridiculous and so um Prisoners are still getting sick from that water. They claim that it's clean, but it's still not clean. Okay, now there's been a number of articles that have been popping up. And as you mentioned, some of the state representatives, I believe seven of them uh, last week made efforts to go into the prison and they were denied. They were um, denied access. Yeah, now now you have- uh, And our tax dollars still, still support this prison. No doubt. How far is that from Atlanta, by the way? It's about an hour and 10 minutes. When I go out there, it's an hour and 10 minutes. And what, what's the population? Is it? Uh, uh, I want to say it's about 1,300 prisoners there. 1,300 prisoners. What's the surrounding uh, area? What is it? Uh, is it a, like Gainesville area? So you're passing Lake Lanier and all that and just going straight down there. It's, it's down in that direction. So is it a mixed population around there or as far as, you know, outside um, the prison? No, it's mostly a uh, 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 Caucasian uh, area. Okay, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. And these are the people who are employed at the prison, pretty much. Okay. Now, your daughter Trinity, I've been knowing her. Trinity's how old? Like, what, 20 right now? She's 21 now. She's about to be 22, 22 in, uh, in October. Okay, so when we met, she was literally a baby. Right, okay. exactly. So now, um, due to whatever situation she ends up uh, at Arendelle State Prison, What's going on with her over there? Because you told me some things that, that were really disturbing. 
So what's been going on with her is um, Trinity pretty much committed the crime when she was 17, uh, got arrested that night at midnight on her birthday. Hmm. So um, since she's been there, it's just been constant with her. She has a uh, psychological disorder, so she has to take medication. They have denied her medication. They've denied her access to her psychiatrist, which she's supposed to be going to uh, once a week. Um, they have, you know, uh, allowed her to be abused in there by the prisoners and by the staff. Um, and it's just it's just escalating to the point where, you know, I just I don't know what to do. And so that's why I'm just reaching out to the community because something has to be done. Like as we speak right now, she has staples in her head from where a guard banged her head against the bars and a broken hand. They threw her in the hole. And so she's not getting any medical attention. I called up there for someone to check on her and see about her. And it's just it's just nothing, you know, and I'm just really concerned about her safety and her life there. So, and they've given you no answers. You're saying that they banged their head up against the bars. She has stitches, I mean, excuse me, staples, mm -hmm. um, a broken hand, so on and so forth. And they Right, so her. she sat and bled for an hour before they even put the stitches, they put the staples in. They put the staples in and just put her in a hole, didn't do anything about her hand. And so, you know, it's just, just in alignment with what the articles are saying, that the prisoners are not getting the proper medical attention that they need and they're being abused by the staff there. Okay, now there was a situation, um, I know you told me about something about her being attacked uh, by guards while she was naked. What, can you speak right. on that? Right, so that happened when, uh, because she wasn't having her medication that she's supposed to have. So she was having an episode and she didn't have pretty much put the sheet around her neck and was still fighting her. The, the, um, the guard, I have the guard's name here somewhere. Who, who the put guard, the sheet around her neck? Who put the sheet around her neck? You saying she did or the guard did? The guard did. Officer Fuller. Put a sheet around her, her neck. With a sheet around her neck. Officer Fuller choked her with a sheet around her neck, threatened to beat her up. They put her in an unclean, unsanitized room. They were trying to take her to the COVID unit and she didn't have COVID. So it's like they're trying to put her in there. So, you know, for some reason they, they didn't do that, which I was glad about. But then, you know, they weren't giving her her medicine. And then while all this was happening, there was another officer, uh, Sir Frady, who turned his camera down and then turned the camera off so that, you know, what's happening is not being recorded. These guards are, have cameras on them as well. Right. But they're just turning them off or turning them down so that they can do whatever they want to do to the prisoners. And who's who's scanning the videos? You know, no, if no one's having access to anything, it's just that they're just running rampant and they're doing whatever they want to do. This is crazy. So, um, uh, wow. Um, so basically, you know, and, and you also told me that uh, you told me about sending resources to the prison to her that she hadn't received. Can you speak on that? Yeah, so I've been, you know, ordering books through Amazon to, you know, get to her like self-help books and journals, different things that, you know, they say that they can have and she's never receiving the stuff. She's not getting the stuff. I sent some stuff in, I want to say June and she's just getting that book that I sent her last week. So it's like they're just holding on to their stuff. A lot of her letters that she's sending me, I'm not getting. Letters that I'm sending her, she's not getting. It's just, it's just a mess. So, so, um, and there, there's been, you said there's been other suicides and mysterious deaths and all that type stuff. Exactly, um, but no accountability. Okay, so, no accountability. Okay, so, um, have you spoken to any any representatives? Have you spoken to any of the I've been reaching out, but I haven't been able to really get any assistance from anybody. So, you know, that's one of the reasons why I'm here right now, because it's like, um, you know, if no one's going to help me advocate for my daughter, then I'll, I'll have to advocate myself. But yeah. this is ridiculous. It's inhumane conditions in that prison and something just has to be done. I mean, the article I was reading, I know they were saying that, I mean, it was actually talking about how filthy it was and how, um, I guess uh, someone from the prison had uh, dropped a dime or whatever and was kind of 
telling them what was going on in there and still to no avail. Rampant with drugs and everything like that. So with Trinity not being able to have access to her medication, now she's using some other stuff in there. I don't know what it is, but it's just like, it's just whatever, whatever goes in there and they're not being checked about it. Have you been able to communicate with her? Uh, yeah, she called me Saturday. That's why, I mean, I sent the message out. She called me Saturday crying like I'm in the hole. They bust my head open. My hand is broke. Nobody won't help me. Like, they just had me sitting here for 36 hours. They haven't given me my stuff. I don't have no clothes. Like, they just, you know, and, and these are women. Most of these guards out here are men. And so why is she not clothed? Wow. So these are male guards in, in, a, in a women's prison? Yes. And this this is a private prison, basically. Mostly, yes, it's mostly men guards. So this is so. I mean, I mean, just I mean that thought alone is just like, uh, I mean, some wild shit. It sounds like a. Right. a, a and every time shit. I go there, they have a board, I guess, of the officers that they caught in the act of doing something, and that board is always filled with officers who have violated the, you know, the their oath of what they're supposed to be doing there. So those are just the ones that are being caught. Wow. Wow. You know, I'm, I, you know, talking to you for, for the viewers out here. Um, I'm, I'm glad to have you on first off, because of the fact that one of the stories we talked about earlier was corruptions, corruption here at Atlanta federal penitentiary. And yeah. then, um, even yeah, the federal prison, like they have like a hundred, they used to have like 12,000 people there. Now they got like 128 prisoners. It's just rampant with just corruption from the Ruta to the Tudor. It's just straight up corrupt. And the federal uh, prison bureau is not doing anything. They're not answering questions. People are sending in complaints and they're not doing anything about it. They're the ones that's supposed to regulate this. And they're not even responding. They know it's corrupt. Right. It's and they're crazy. just not doing anything about it. Well, I'm Except happy taking that. our money from our taxes, but not doing anything about it. And, you know, I was going to say for the viewers, man, you know, sometimes we need to, to hear from family because of the fact that, again, this is a, a I mean, she's a, a woman now, but this is a, a child that I've known since she was literally a baby. And here it is, a a mother talking about their child. We, we just talked about a, um, spoke about a situation earlier as well about a woman in California being attacked in front of her father uh, by police to have to, I know you must feel pretty damn hopeless to, right. To right. just, you know, have to witness this. I mean, um, exactly. And like, just helpless. Like, right. there's nothing I can do. I call, I file complaints, I'm reaching out, you know, to the community, I'm reaching out to, you know, people that I think that can help me. And just, it's just like, I'm just not getting any help anywhere. Do you have a list of phone numbers that we can possibly call or whatever? Um, yes, I do have the number to the prison. Like I said, the warden's name, the new warden as of August 1st is Alan Dillis. The number there is 706-776-4700. You spell his name again? Alan, A-L-L-E-N, okay. Dillis, D-I-L-L-I-S. Um, I also contacted the reporter that- Give us that, that phone number again. I'm sorry. Give us that phone number because I want to have mm -hmm. our folks call this guy. Right. 706-776-776. 4700. I'll put it in the chat here too. Cool, cool, cool. And he's the warden? Yeah, he's the new warden. Okay, okay, okay. So we definitely uh, want to make sure that uh, folks call this warden's office, Alan Dillis, 706 776 4700. 706 776 4700. And, and ask him, you know, what's going on uh, in this prison. Uh, we, we need some oversight. We need, you know, let them know that we are watching and that we're not going to sit back and allow more women to be murdered in this prison or abused. Or push to the point of suicide. Right, 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 right. Yeah, so, and probably um, having mental disorders, not being able to get their medication, not being able to speak with their psychiatrist because y'all are denying them the medical care that they need. Yeah, well, definitely, you know, keep us posted. Um, you know, we're going to uh, assist. I know our organization is going to work on assisting you in putting together some type of um, call tree and uh, 
petition and perhaps our folks in the in the uh the chat can assist us with that because of the fact that this is unacceptable we we you know we talk about political prisoners on this show but uh you know social prisoners as well we got to remember that george jackson you know he went in as a social prisoner he was arrested uh for at age 18 for uh a 70 dollar gas station robbery right. you know and he was sentenced from one to life so you know a lot of our Ooh. brothers and sisters they go inside these camps and oftentimes they don't make it out so uh, right. we, we definitely appreciate you uh you coming on board and um you know sharing with us what's going on with your daughter i know it, it has to be difficult because of the fact that, you know, no one wants to talk about, you know, uh, family issues, especially public. But when yeah. it's necessary, then, you know, yeah, then so. it's necessary for us to do what we need to do. So this is just a new age slavery, a new age way for them to abuse black people. Period. Period. No doubt. We appreciate you coming on. Uh, we will be in touch with you. Thank you for having me. Without a doubt, stay strong, and we're gonna be right back at you. you listen, you're checking out the Remix Morning Show. That's our sister, Black Sis Ebony Holmes, and uh, we will be supporting, you know, the, uh, you know, we'll be supporting this particular cause and more. Remix, we'll be right back at Thanks. you. No doubt, salute.